Hey, it is your buddy, Peace and Harmony, with you here today. Much love going out to all the beautiful, empowered harmonizers. We are zooming in and focusing in a little bit more in depth on a trait of the psychopath, which is known as the dominance bond. A psychopath um, is felt to be about one in a hundred, or as you get into upper management or C-level executive, felt to be higher than that, perhaps four in a hundred, is an antisocial personality disorder, which is generally typified by several things. Namely, they don't have an experience of fear. Um, they don't have an experience of learning and judgment the way that most people do that enables them to withstand high levels of stress without really feeling any sort of anxiety or being thrown off balance. They're really sort of unfeeling. This unfeeling nature, as I've described in a lot of other videos, has uh, components within the brain itself which are different. Those structures are different, informed differently, and connect differently than the rest of the population. And so a, a psychopath, though, because of this inability to sort of feel emotions, including really fear, love, uh, connectedness, feeling things like patriotism, nationalism, um, connection with family, all those sort of abstract components, a psychopath doesn't engage in that repertoire. So they engage in more of a need for control and for power. This subjects them to a high degree of manipulation over others. Manipulation is one of the key problems that is part of the dominance bond with those others in their environment. Now, a, a dominance bond means that they essentially want to have um, control over others, to dominate, to subjugate to their mindset, to their protocol with their needs being met. And oftentimes in an exploitative nature, which means it's not in your best interest. But what I want to discuss with the, um, the dominance bond is really the feeling that, um, you know, as they want to maintain superiority over others, they don't come across as wanting to be superior. Although other times it might be, you know, flagrantly obvious, this dominance over others um, is oftentimes in a specifically received by the other individual as connection, as energy, as thrill, as excitement, as really close connection. The dominance bond, what people don't realize that when a psychopath is using their qualities to control others, specifically through their enigmatic communication, their nonverbal communication, their sort of puzzling speech, uh, the way that they connect things that aren't really meant to be connected. They create and establish this psychopathic dominance bond in those individuals around them. And the issue that I want to discuss today is the presence of this connection, which oftentimes is felt to be a high level love or I need you, I want you, you are my soulmate, you're getting me on the right track, sort of experience in their victims. The dominance bond, you know, is very strong. It's the yang to the yin. It's the, you know, assertive, aggressive, you know, putting the foot down, you know, larger than life. It might even come across as a hero. The psychopath might be very charismatic, you know, very, um, um, just sort of, you know, like you just want to keep all eyes on them. You want to keep all ears on them. You know, you perk up when they come in the room. And this is not like your usual relationship that you might have with a close friend, a family member, you know, your pet, you know, your favorite TV show where, you know, you want to be focused. There's a loss of empowerment in the dominance bond. There is a loss in, of empowerment 
in the victim, in the other, in the individual who is the flip side, the other part of the coin with the dominance bond in a psychopath. And the disempowerment is really, I feel, one of the excruciating main problems um, because it is housed in denial in the other individual and they don't see it as such. They don't realize the trickery, the deceit, the deception that is involved as part of the manipulation as a psychopath wraps their communication around this manipulation and really sends a message that it's, you know, um, for their own good or that they know better or coming across as a hero, which is really one of dependence and control. A lot of people feel energized by a psychopath. They feel titillated, excited, um, the answer to their prayers. There's no one else like them. This person is, uh, you know, such a, you know, charming, attractive person. Why would I, you know, they're just sort of transfixed and just sort of in a trance like situation. And they, this happens to many people in their environment because of their sort of oftentimes bigger than life aura, their physique, uh, the way that they move their body. They have been able to assess and assimilate what gets other people's attention. They have a very keen eye. Think of it almost like x-ray vision. They see things in others that others don't see, i.e. the rest of the population who has emotions, who has values, who has, um, you know, uh, needs for real connection, real bonds, the real thing, relationships, natural, organically, you know, or even super special relationships. It's a natural organic process. And, you know, there's a, a, a give or take, but the main problem with the dominance bond is it's based on manipulation and deception, control, trying to control the feelings, manipulate the outcome of the individual without their knowing. That is why it is so tedious. That is why it is so important that you become aware of this aspect of a relationship with someone who is psychopathic. They are seeking to manipulate. They are doing this through disempowering others without their knowing, which then prompts people into a series of denial and not seeing the reality, not seeing what's actually happened. It's sort of coded over with this um, pleasure, with um, oftentimes, you know, a feeling of what other people might describe as closeness, intimacy. There's, you know, everything is smooth sailing. Everything is just euphoric. Um, so people describe the experience that they have just, you know, met their superhero or their savior. You know, they're all these sort of experiences that people describe it as. And um, so meaning that the superiority that they exude um, is to the deflation and minimizing and disempowerment of others. But the problem that I want to discuss here is that people don't see or are aware or conscious that it is not in their best interest while it is going on because it's this hyper arousal. Um, <clears throat> the hyper arousal really is a way for a psychopath to distract their targets, to distract their victims, meaning the way that they communicate their charm, um, giving that sort of, you know, glued eyes, you know, letting every all your guard down, just sort of this ultimate trust that they will create in their subjects, feeling that you can trust me, your secrets are safe with me, you can be who you are, um, don't worry with me. You don't have to impress me. You are the most handsome. You are the most beautiful. You are, you know, the most intelligent. You are the most sensitive. There's going to be a lot of these sort of superficial, um, <clears throat> sort of pedantic, and I think what they would call gratuitous complimenting that are received by the subject or by the victim or the target as genuine. Um, and that is the problem. A lot of people cannot let go because then there is a resulting 
fantasy bond. John um, Bradshaw describes that in his book, Healing the Shame That Binds You, and he discusses the fantasy bond that people who have been victimized create in their mind in order to keep sort of the de denial going and it causes them to be obsessively protective of their abusers. A fantasy bond is created as a way to sort of explain and deny and protect oneself. You know, they're being hard on me because they love me. Um, you know, all these different excuses that are part of the fantasy bond, the, 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 the victim, the target, the one who is victimized is the one who's, you know, dr you know, drumming all this up in their mind. Um, and the psychopath will definitely entertain that fantasy bond. In fact, you know, once they know that they've got people there, then they're able to really let off the gas a little bit. And then they sort of test people, um, meaning that they'll use the same tactics again and again. You know, if they're calling you by a nickname, they'll just use it like a button pusher. Right, honey? Isn't that right, honey? 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 You know, and they'll just keep going and testing you and they'll just basically give themselves a laugh when you're falling deeper and deeper into the quicksand with them, the emotional quicksand, and they're just like, I've got them hook, line, and sinker. A psychopath oftentimes view themselves as superior because they don't interpret them being weighed down by regular emotions, concern, care, um, things like um, anxiety, stress, um, things that are, are normal to people. Um, I'm not, you know, I'm, um, that would be immoral. That would be wrong. That would be offensive. Um, that would be violating your boundaries. That would be inappropriate. That would be wrong. Socially unacceptable. All these things that we know automatically not to do usually which means violating somebody's boundaries, not only physically, but emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. Meaning, you know, the high risk behavior that a psychopath will engage in as a result in these differences in the structures of their brain, the amygdala, the prefrontal cortex, the dopamine, it gives them this sort of rush when they are dominating others. And the, the problem though, is that the dominance is usually combined with inferiority, meaning you're so stupid. I love you. You know, these, um, you know, you'll never get it right. Um, why don't you give it up and come here? You know, it's this combination of sort of kicking you in the pants, but then hugging you simultaneously. And it becomes this real hyper arousal, which I feel in order to relieve the pain, the people then identify with the fantasy bond in order to overcome the emotional pain because they're at such a high level of stimulation. Meaning what can the high stimulation be? Um, physical touch, um, um, verbal comments that almost feel like a touch, the look in the eyes that's one of pulling you in and realize it's not you in your own body. People kind of get pulled out of their own emotional body and sort of almost vacuously drawn into the dominance bond of the psychopath. This is very important for you to understand. It's kind of complex. I really recommend that you look at this over and over and understand the connection between a dominance bond of a psychopath that gives them a superiority in a diminishing and extinguishing of others sense of right or wrong, which they know and sort of cuts it off. It numbs it out. It extinguishes it. So that they're no longer able to sort of hear their heart, pay attention to what they know that is right. They get sort of checked out, numbed out, transfixed, glued in the fantasy bond, which then completes that denial and it causes them to be protective of the abuser, sort of swing the other side. And um, being, being in denial um, is an automatic defense mechanism. Of course, you know, Freud discussed this in the early days as a way to protect yourself and for survival sake. So a lot of people then become dependent and addicted on this dominance bond which is disempowering you simultaneously. Once again, it's a very strong connection 
of come here, you idiot. You know, um, just sort of, you need me, um, you uh, rely on me, you're dependent on, you know, it's all these different things that you then are dependent on for this high level of stimulation, but people can't really see what is going on. They're not consciously aware, you know, in the midst of this. They don't realize how they're being set up for dependence. Their, 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 their lives become fused with this person and they control them like a puppet. And uh, it is very, very uh, sad, I feel, when this happens because the most vulnerable, the most kind, sweet people are the ones who get really swept up. And it's, it's not a bond. It's not, they have attachment issues, just like a narcissist does. But it's important to understand that there is a very negative um, sort of psychologically hijacking component to their manipulation in the dominance bond. Um, meaning they're really going to sort of ride you like, you know, ride you like a horse. In other words, riding your ever, every move, riding your every decision, you know, calculating and seeing how your body reacts. Remember, these people have like x-ray vision. They see body language differently than most people. They're, you know, they can, feel, you know, they're, they can scan a crowd and they can see just sort of emotionally who has low self-confidence, who has low self-esteem. You know, most people don't walk around sort of thinking about these things. A psychopath, though, they don't have anything else to think about. This is what they do. This is how they operate. They're, they're just like looking to pick people out of the crowd um, and exert this dominance bond on. The problem is that, you know, um, people don't realize it is happening. Um, and once again, sort of circling back to the addiction component is to realize that you might feel very empty when they're away. You know, how can you kind of know? Um, you might feel that you can't operate when they're away. You begin to slow down. You might begin to question yourself. You might wait for them. Um, you might not make decisions. You might not be able to feel that you have kind of your own thing going on. You're feeling disempowered. And that dis, you know, lack of power, lack of personal power. Your personal power is a number one important thing that you are in connection with in your life. That stillness within. That foundation and security and serenity and spaciousness within. The I am. The alignment with your mind and heart and your spirit. Sort of knowing and living your values. Um, being able to provide for yourself. Feed yourself. Um, clothe yourself. Think for yourself. Um, have relationships for yourself. So that you're not cut out under the knees. You know, cut out where it hurts. <clears throat> The psychopath will, uh, it's kind of a mystery of how they're able to control people and sort of send a message which gets sort of flipped in the brain and reinterpreted in others. It's, um, it's a, I think, a very misunderstood or not yet fully understood way that they communicate um, and they control others. So sort of, um, I, I feel it's sort of telepathic, if you will, um, I, I just don't know. It's deeper than that. Um, it's it's subconscious and subliminal, um, without a doubt. And I think that's the area that we're dealing with. So, you know, just like you don't have control over your subconscious, um, your subconscious is sort of running the show. And that's the level of manipulation that a psychopath will engage in. Um, and sometimes you can get a conscious flicker of it. Um, but meaning that, you know, the dominance bond is, is based on wanting approval. Um, it is based on wanting adherence. It's based on wanting compliance. It's based on subjecting yourself to them, their value system, their opinions, what they think. Because remember, they're sort of come off as heroic. They come off as super uh, human. They come off as sort of knowing what is best, what is right, advancing up, um, you know, and, and climbing and doing certain things 
in life that most people are not comfortable doing. In other words, violating boundaries, violating social norms, saying things that are outright lies. Oh, have we forgotten about that? The pathological lying. They can just utter without any feeling. So most people, if they were to lie under oath, they would know it is wrong. They wouldn't do it. You know, they're fearful of the consequences. It's not right to lie. It's, you know, you can get in big trouble. So this is what I'm talking about. This is your gut. This is your value system. Just something basic like that. Whereas someone who is psychopathic, they don't feel that tinge of guilt, remel remorse, uh, wrong. They'll just, and, and it doesn't have to be on big, serious things. It can be on little things. Um, and then coupled with this sort of banter or psychopathic word salad talk that coaxes and conditions the target, the subject, to sort of look to them for the answers, look to them for this stimulation, look to them for their feedback, look to them for the next lessons, how to think, how to feel, how to, your perspective. So part of their manipulation is sort of taking on the perspective of the psychopath and sort of thinking differently the way that they do. And a lot of people then get stuck in the fantasy bond and don't realize that they're being sort of carried over to the wrong side of the tracks with this person. And they live in denial oftentimes when they're getting distance from their own values because what ends up happening, people then get hyper aroused and stimulated by going against themselves. This, I feel, is the core and crux of the psychopathic bond, the dominance bond. <clears throat> people get addicted and hooked to their own self-degradation. In other words, they're agreeing to the inferiority subconsciously. You know, you are, you don't know this. You don't know that. You don't have the social facility that I do. Come with me is kind of the message. And so people then begin to sort of be brainwashed and gaslighted. Not sort of, they are. Um, it's a very terrifying, you know, situation for people who think that they're growing, that they're learning, that they're advancing, that they're elevating, when indeed they're becoming disempowered. They're losing perspective. They're losing their values. They're losing themselves. It's, I mean, this is not how life should be. <laughs> you know, um, it is not healthy. It is not organic, meaning it is not part of your self-preservation. It's being taken over by a dominance bind by a psychopath who will hyper arouse you to sort of go against your own inner voice. It is the enemy. Um, and But the problem is, is that then people become infatuated with the enemy. They become in love, transfixed, glued, and trusting of this enemy. They become um, servant to the enemy. They become um, one with, they become fused with, they open up all their senses to, listen for them, look for them, become on alert for them, you know, um, and just sort of, you know, and then there's this sort of taking over, uh, and then where people then feel that they're out of character. I wouldn't usually be this, you know, concerned. I wouldn't usually be, you know, waiting by the phone. I wouldn't waiting by the door. I wouldn't be, um, you know, um, uh, driving this car. I wouldn't be wearing this outfit. I wouldn't be going on this date. I, you know, usually there's, you know, uh, I wouldn't be doing this because that's, you know, the voice of someone who has violated their own boundaries. And they then become hyper aroused by this going against themselves and abandoning themselves and basically a self sabotage, if not way, way, way worse. Um, and it becomes very much like a glue, like a super glue that becomes very difficult to pry yourself away from because your thoughts are then into sort of intertwined and dependent and entrained with this sort of thought form and energy of this individual. <clears throat> so it's very important that if you identify this, that you go, I see how they're able to sort of brainwash or mislead 
or deceive and manipulate and sort of get people, you know, into a loss of perspective, which your perspective, you know, coming from your own strength, security, serenity, empowerment, knowing what's best for you and being able to be in, in, in touch with that ability and potential is, is life preservation. It is life saving. It is life giving to you. This is your, you know, your empowerment space, your I am, who you are, taking care of yourself, your health, your finances, your work, your relationships, your spirituality, your joy, your hobbies, your fitness, um, all these different things, you know, coming from this. And, you know, before we wrap it up, I'll have you, you know, ponder then that true love does not require an outside comparison. True love does not require, you know, and self-esteem, valuation of self, does not rely on comparison with others. In other words, it's not always value. True self-esteem isn't valuing itself how it compares with others. It just exists on its own. I value self. I value life. I value good. I value wholesome. I value truth. You know, I am your identity. And then, you know, looking at then that fantasy bond, which then is cooked up by this psychopath within you so that you're then living a life in denial in the midst of it, if that makes any sense. And then you have to really pull and pry yourself away and really, you know, you're oftentimes feel lost without this dominance bond. But realize what is at the core of the dominance bond is that disempowerment in that sort of getting you disoriented and the fact that it's oftentimes tinged with a lot of negativity about you about you and people that are falling in love with the negativity of self it's a very very um it's not a typical relationship let's put it that way it's very important that you become aware of this type of individual the dominance bond the fantasy bond that can then be created to protect them in the fact that that's how then people then become obsessed with protecting their abuser. Um, you know, just to maintain it, to maintain their hopes and their wishes and those things. But it's important that it's safe, you know, to come down to reality. It's okay to see it for what it is, to learn about it. When the mask slips, you, you see it. But don't think that you can outsmart it. Remember, the psychopath will engage in that dominant bond. It's not only you, you're not alone. It's your buddy, peace and harmony with you here today. I hope these videos do help. Please share, please subscribe, and please donate for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support. Have a beautiful day.